Today we're going to talk about how to calculate the slope of a line. So the slope of a line tells us two different things about the line. It tells us about its steepness as well as the direction that line is going. So when you look at my red line and you always read a line from left to right, this line is decreasing. It's going downwards, right? So any line that is decreasing, we automatically know from looking at that line that it's going to have a negative slope. So if I was in my class right now, I would ask my students to annotate this because it's important that after you do your calculations, you check and see, did I at least get something that was negative? Because if you got a positive number, it indicates you did something wrong because any line that's going downwards should have a negative slope. And of course, on the opposite end, if it was a line that was going upwards, it would have a positive slope. And remember, you read lines from left to right. So from left to right, it's going down. All right, so there are two different um, ways that I'm gonna show you how to calculate the slope. Method number one is by using the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 equals m. So m is the variable that represents slope in the slope intercept form of an equation. So in y equals mx plus b, m is the slope. Um, it's important to note that these little guys, little two and a one, are not exponents. They are just uh, labels, okay? So they're subheadings. So y2 minus y1, not y to the second power. And I'll show you how we're going to use this. So you notice there's two x's and two y's, which means that we need two points in order to use this formula. Now you can choose any two points you want. A line has infinitely many points, and no matter which ones we choose, they're gonna have the same slope in between them because by definition, a line has a constant rate of change, a constant slope throughout these points. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose a random two points. So let's start with this guy right here, the y-intercept which is located at 0, 3. And then I'll choose the point to the right of it, which is the point 2, 2. Okay, so I've chosen my two points. And now the next step is to label these points. So every ordered pair has an X and a Y, right? An X and a Y. And if you can't remember the order, just remember that it's alphabetical order. So an X and a Y, X and a Y. And now to differentiate the two X's that I have and the two Y's that I have, that's where these little labels are going to come in. So I'm going to call my zero my x1. And it doesn't matter. So you could have chosen to call your two x1 if you wanted to. The thing that matters is that whichever um, value you choose to be your x1, then its partner, its corresponding y coordinate has to be your y1. Okay? So because I've chosen for my two now to be x2, then its partner, its corresponding y coordinate, is gonna be my y2. So that's the first thing, let's label these points. x1, y1, x2, y2. Now that you've gotten the labels and you've got the formula, like using any other formula, the next step is always substitution, okay? So let's go ahead and use this formula. So now, instead of writing y2, I'm gonna substitute y2 with the value that I've labeled as y2, which is two. So instead of writing y2, we're writing two. There's a subtraction sign that comes next, so that's coming down. And now y1 will get substituted with 3. So now I have 2 minus 3 over x2, which is going to get substituted with, what did I call x2? 2. So 2, another subtraction sign, x1. What was our x1? If you look up here, our x1 was 0. Okay. So now that we've substituted, the next step is to actually perform the math. So let's simplify the numerator first. 2 minus 3 is negative 1 over 2 minus 0 is 2. So my slope is negative 1 half. And again, that checks out my annotation. It was supposed to be a negative number. It is. That doesn't mean I'm definitely right in what I got, but at least I know I got that part right. So the slope of this line would be negative 1 half. Okay? Method number two is using rise over run. So if you have a graph, a lot of times it's easier to just do this thing called rise over run. Rise meaning my vertical change. Okay, That triangle represents delta, which means change over my run, which is my horizontal change. So again, you need two points. We're going to pick any two points. So I'm going to take us to this side of the graph now. So if we come over here and let me pick, I'm going to call this point A and call this point B just for some clarity. Okay. So if I want to know what's the change, what's my vertical change from point A to point B. So I want to get from A to B, but I could only move vertically and horizontally. So we're not moving diagonally along the line. Okay, we're walking blocks up and down, left and right. So if I wanted to walk from A to B, right, obviously I have to go down. Up is not gonna get me any closer. So how far down though do you have to go? 
I have to walk one block down, right? And then I'm gonna have to make a turn. So my vertical change was one unit, but I went down, so I'm gonna say it's negative one. My vertical change is negative one. So if I'm replacing my rise and my run, my rise would be negative one. Now my run. So now from this point, I, I'm still not at B. So do I have to go left or do I have to go right? Clearly I have to move to the right in order for me to reach B. Now how much to the right? I'm gonna walk one, two blocks. So two units will get me over to B. So that's my run, my horizontal change. And look what I have here. The same exact value that I got using method number one. So either way you do it, your slope of this red line that I drew is going to be negative one half, okay? Um, and just to show you one other thing, I can choose points that are further away. So let's say I chose to call, let's call this point, point C. Let's say I wanna go from A to C instead, and I'm gonna use rise over run. So now to get from A to C, again, I have to go down, right? But I have to go further down than B. So it's gonna be one, two, three spaces down. So now my vertical change is down three, negative three. And then over one, two, three, four, five, six, six is my run. So now if I tried to write the rise over run, it would look like negative three over six, which at first glance you might think is different from what we first got. But if you take a second to think about it, you'll realize these are actually equivalent fractions, right? Negative three over six, if I simplify it, is the same as negative one half. So again, no matter which two points you pick, because by definition, a line has a constant rate of change, a constant slope, you're going to get the same answer as long as you do it correctly, all right? Um, let's do one more example because there's something that may make this a little bit trickier. So this time I'm not giving you a graph. So because I'm not giving you a graph, that means we have to use the formula method. So we're gonna find the slope of a line that passes through these two points. There is no graph, so that means I have to know my formula. So m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So now if you remember from before, my next step would have been to label. So let's go up into these points and let's label them. So again, my points always have an x and a y, an x and a y, but now I'm going to label them. So I'm gonna call this my x1, and if that's my x1, this one better be my y1 and I'll call this my x2 and my y2, okay? So the next step we did was to substitute. So I've labeled and now I'm gonna substitute in. So instead of writing y2, I'm gonna look for my y2. Here's my y2, it was seven. So I'm gonna write m equals seven minus, what's my y1? Five, so seven minus five over x2. So look for your x2, here it is, one minus, x1, let's look for my x1. Here it is, negative three. This is somewhere where you might get a little bit confused. My x1 is negative three. That minus sign doesn't take the place of that negative three. I still have to write a negative three here. So it's not one minus three. It's one minus negative three, okay? And now I'm gonna simplify. Seven minus five is two. And one minus negative three, if you keep change, change, right? This actually becomes one plus positive three. So one plus three is four. So the slope of this line would be two over four, but you really always should simplify when possible, and two over four simplifies to one half. So the slope of this line would be one half. So I'm gonna leave you with a practice problem so that if you wanna try it on your own, the answer to the practice problem is gonna be down below in the explanation. And if you're not, if you didn't get the right answer and you're not sure how I got the answer that I got, you can leave a comment. I'll try to help you or maybe someone else from the math community can help you figure it out. Okay, good luck.